Hi, I'm Glenn Whip with the Los Angeles Times. The FX comedy Baskets premiered earlier this year. One of the great pleasures of the TV season has been watching the work of Louis Anderson on the show, playing Zach Galifianakis's mom. Joining us, Louis Anderson. Hey, Glenn. Welcome. Welcome to me and to this beautiful setup you have here. Thanks. I love I love when they set up something like this. This is really the new age now where we're a studios anywhere. Yeah. Am I yeah, right? Yeah. And I love that idea of being able to do that. I'm watching the pilot, you know, premieres and I'm I'm enjoying it and then all of a sudden you come on screen. I'm like, man, yeah, that's that's Louis is that Louis Anderson? Wait. How did you keep this a secret? For I know all Listen until the show premiered. That was the biggest thing, is keeping it a secret. Like, I, I, I shot the pilot in 2014. I think it was May or something like that. I'm terrible on dates, so yeah. don't hold me to it. But well, a while back. Yeah, a while back, and, and they said, you can't mention it to anyone. And I said, I can't? Because, you know, you want to mention that. I'm playing Zach's mom. Uh, but it was amazing, so... Um, Luckily, nobody talked about it. Nobody, and then as it got closer, people heard I was in the show, and they'd say, "I heard you're in Zach's new show," and I go, "Yeah, I play his trainer," and <laughs> and that would get a laugh, and then it would throw them off the scent. Okay. And then uh, FX smartly, um, a while before, a couple weeks before, when they sent out the screeners, decided to not. Uh, they ask, I think, everybody to kind of keep it a secret. Right. But, you know, it wasn't, it was a big relief. It was a sense of relief. But still, people had no, really didn't catch on to it until the first couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And what was that like? What was the reaction like um, after the show finally did premiere and you got to talk about it? I guess the first time I saw it was when we did the screening, you know, for FX and for all the, the people involved and all the, all the writers and all the people in the press. And so then that was interesting to hear where I got the laughs. Because as a comedian, you know, you're looking for the laughs in, in that sure. particular performance. And um, I guess I have mixed feelings about, you know, listening to what people say about a performance. Because, you know, you, you know, you can't start listening to all how great you are. Because I already have a giant head. Yeah. And so if it got bigger, I just... I know that what the results of that. Yeah, I read a, I read a quote from you saying that you didn't want, you, at, at some point you stopped reading the I reviews did, because did. you didn't want Christine, your character, to get a, to, to become highfalutin. Yeah, exactly, because I love that, you know, line my mom used to use, highfalutin. Yeah. They think they're so highfalutin. Highfalutin well, is a great word. It is a great word, and my mom's delivery on it was really good, and she... She was a very funny person and, and is a big part of who Christine is. She was, a, she was part of the inspiration for the performance and the character. Well, you know, the, the thing is I've been doing my mom's, act, my mom's voice in my stand-up act for 30 years. And so I was able to kind of pick up some of her nuances and oftentimes during the shoot, I asked Jonathan Kreisel, can I say it like my mom would say it? And he was so generous, and that seemed to really help the character develop. And was that why Jonathan Kreisel and Louis C.K., the, the creators of the show, and Zach, um, thought of you? I think so. Actually, I think it was Zach okay. who said he heard a voice, and Louis, and he made the sound of the voice, and Louis C.K. said, you mean like Louis Anderson? And then he goes, yes. And he goes, should we call him? And then they called me and said, Louie, I said, hi, Louie. He said, uh, we are doing a sitcom with Zach. We want you to play a character. And I said, yeah, that'd be great. You know, when those two people call you, you think, yeah. yeah, yeah there's a make, benchmark of yeah. quality there. Yeah, you yeah. just go, these are the movers and shakers in comedy for, for real right now. And, um, and then they said, we want you to play Zach's mom. And I go, yes. You know, that kind of like realization that, Somebody said, finally, you know what I mean? There's a part that I could see completely. It was really funny. I could see it completely the moment they mentioned it, and I don't even know why. So that's interesting, because I was wondering if you were surprised by the offer, but it sounds like, 
I mean, by the part, you know, of the offer of playing the mom, but it sounds like you were not, and you kind of just embraced it from, from the get-go. I was, I was surprised that anybody offered me a job. <laughs> so that was part of my, because when you're, <coughs> when you're 62, right, um, and somebody offers you a job, you go, well, that's nice. You know, I always think that, that that's such a great, mm -hmm. great thing. And then when it's such a, an, an obscure thing, me playing Zach Galifianakis' mom would make no sense to anybody but me, Zach, Louis, and John Kreisel at the time, I at think. At the time. You now know? it makes, you know, in retrospect, it seems perfect, you know. I think people, I mean, you know, for me, my goal was right from the beginning to have Louis Anderson disappear when I was doing the part, to disappear from uh, the screen. Mm -hmm. And how, how, how much of the character was there from the beginning? How much of a hand did you have in creating Christine? Well, you have to, I mean, I don't, I, I, here's what happened every day. I got in there around 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And you have to put the clothes on first because there's an extensive wig that you, if you watch the show, you see sure. that I wear. A really great wig that they had made, you know, measuring my giant head, and and um, and when you put the clothes on, and then you put the wig on, and you look into the mirror, and you see the transformation, so to speak. And it's a, it's not an easy process to get the wig on. It, it you know, it just isn't. I have a lot of respect for people who are doing that daily. Okay. And then I go to makeup and they put the makeup on. And then when someone puts lipstick on you, I don't care who you are, you go like this. Hmm. Yeah. I look pretty good. <laughs> you know? Right. And that's kind of how the, that's in one sense how that, you know, it came to, it almost, it took over the idea of, of the character kind of took over me. Mm -hmm. And then when, you know, when other people would be in the chair next to me getting makeup or hair that were extras or people that I hadn't met, I introduced myself as Christine. Mm. And then I asked everyone on the set to call me Christine and not Louie. And then I asked them to put Christine on the door of the trailer. So that's about disappearing, as you said. Yeah, I didn't want people didn't want to, get the, to get any other idea except that I was Zach's mom. Mm. Mm -hmm. You talked about the wardrobe. She has a great wardrobe she in the does. show. I'm she does. I'm thinking particularly of the uh, Easter episode. There's a great uh, bonnet. That bonnet. <laughs> I want to tell you a story. The first day I went, excuse me, um, the first day I went to wardrobe, mm -hmm. the very first day we were having a lunch to meet everybody to meet each other, and the wardrobe person was there. And the first thing we, they sent me to was wardrobe to try on and pick out stuff I'd be comfortable wearing. And I spotted that bonnet on top of the thing. I go, let me put that on. And I put that thing on and I said, oh yeah, this is, uh, this is gonna be. <laughs> we have to is, find a use for this. We have to this. find a use yes. for this. And then I picked out clothes that I thought my mom and my five sisters would wear. I went right down the rack and I go, I think they'd wear this. 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 Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, w I was never a kid who wanted to try on my sisters. I think when I was real little, my sisters used to dress me up like a girl. I think that sisters do that to little boys. I think right. they, they like to torture us. <laughs> and, but I never wanted to try on those clothes. But I, I really, those clothes really fit mm. my character well. And the person who, there's a person who does clothing. I forget her name and I apologize. She makes real clothes for real women or clothes for real women, that's the name of the company. Okay. And she made a lot of these clothes for Christine and they're just fantastic. And Christine, um, it's not easy being Chip Basket's mom, I imagine. There are, there are he, he's a, you know, for if you haven't watched the show, he's like this ne'er-do-well, he went to clown school in Paris. Yeah. Now he's back in Bakersfield, he's a rodeo clown, not earning a whole lot. Um, Christine wants to be proud of him, but um, she, sees, she sees his flaws, she sees his potential, I think, 
just like any mom, I guess. You know, there's a real line um, that she walks with mothering, isn't there? She's complicated and he's complicated. Mm -hmm. And together they're even more complicated. And so you're right. There's this thing like, see, Christine has a whole story herself before she even had the kids. And so I think that's the beauty of what Jonathan Kreisel, who's the director and co-creator of, of the show, is trying to do is, as we go on, more of that is developed, who these people are. And he's been gracious enough to add, let us add ourselves in our lives and what we've been through or what we imagine these characters are going through. And there's such a great collaboration feeling on the set that I could put in the stuff about Christine's husband. I could imagine the stuff with my mom and her, her uh, husband, my father. And that kind of stuff has been allowed to, I think, add to the character. So, you know, Chris, uh, Chip is a really complicated kid. Christine, yeah. Christine is, is really, really protective of him and wants to help him. Yeah, I love the, um, the episode where Chip's uh, wife, you know, in just basically certificate only, <laughs> she, he married her in Paris. She came over, I guess, for the green card, um, but clearly doesn't love him. So she has a reckoning with Mama Baskets. <laughs> and it's a great setup, isn't it's it? It's a great setup. It's a great kind of chess match uh, throughout the day because um, Christine kind of puts on sort of a simple front to her. Mm -hmm. They go to Costco together. She extols the values of multi-packs and, you know, do you have these in Paris? And I mean, but the, what, the two for one wine at the restaurant they go to, but by the end of the episode, she's totally has her. Yeah. I, he told. Yeah. She told. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Someone but, totally yeah, has yeah. her. Yeah. No, but it's that like was a really she's, hard. On, she's on the plane back to Paris. Yeah. She's gone, you know. Well, you know, um, it, I think this is a Midwest virtue, at least, or maybe it's a, it's a real uh, American thing where people will call you and say, hey, can we get together today? And you, you are so excited about maybe getting together and figuring out this dilemma you're in with this particular person. You know, maybe they were an adversary, maybe they were an enemy, maybe they were even a friend or a boss or something. And you spend the day with them and they always start out innocently enough. Yeah. You know, you go to lunch, you go and look at the view of Bakersfield, you, you know, go to where Chip's father, you know, fell off the bridge. And then you go to be dropped off by Christine and she tells you to get your things and get the hell out <laughs> of the basket's yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. And it was a really hard scene for both of us because uh, Sabina, who plays it, she has a, a band called the Brazilian Girls. She's, you know, and that's where Chip knew her from. And, um, it was really painful for me to be so mean to her mm -hmm. because as a person, you know, that's one of the things that's kind of hard in acting when you have to be really, really mean to somebody you really, really care about. I think it upped the ante for that scene. Mm -hmm. And I think it made the gravitas uh, heavier because coincidentally, she was all done shooting for the year that day also. She was she was on the plane to so she was on the Paris, plane to Italy. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. So it was just like, oh, this is a dagger to my heart. And so we shot it several times, and both of us cried at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Now you said you were encouraged, kind of to to put your own aspects of your own life and in, into the character. Yeah. Are are there specifics that that you brought in? Well, um, you know, in the Easter episode where my mom is belittling me for not becoming the cheerleader I could have become because I started putting on weight and that's what she is doing and my father also always belittled me 
about my weight. And you know, it's a really an amazing thing, Glenn. Parents will do this weird thing and loved ones will do this weird thing. They will bring up the most personal thing about you to strangers mm -hmm. that they just met that they have never talked to you about directly. Does that make any sense? It's almost like they have a buffer. Like she is telling Martha's parents that I had failed as a cheerleader because of the weight I put on. And, and you know, I remember uh, my dad telling this person doing um, radiation therapy on his prostate cancer. I took him to the appointment. I remember my dad telling the attendant these personal things about his childhood that he had never told me. And I just felt like that scene. And I think oftentimes parents <clears throat> from my generation especially didn't have the capability of doing it and to extol that stuff to a stranger was so much easier and less threatening. Mm -hmm. And it was a way I think of him sharing all that with me uh, without having to look directly at me. Mm -hmm. And I found that really a profound thing at that time, and I was able to use that in that scene. There's, I mean, there's such an, um, a real vulnerability to Christine. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think back to the episode uh, where she made the, uh, sh I think the episode's called Sugar Pie. Mm -hmm. She made the sugar pie for her friend's group. And it's filmed so beautifully because she puts it on the table and then later, you know, you see that the pie has not been touched at all. And the, your reaction is, is just kind of heartbreaking. You know, you, you look at it and it's like, and then the, and then the, the woman explains, gives some kind of awful lame excuse. Yeah. You know, we're off we'll of sugar. sugar. Yeah. 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 Um, and then you, you leave and just kind of toss the pie in the, in the planner, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, you know, we grow up, and this happens a lot, I think, with people. We all have one thing we think we can do really well, and people go along with it. Mm -hmm. But even when it goes out of style, you know, like everybody has that aunt, and they say, you know, she's really a great artist. And so you put her work up in the house. And she's not a great artist, but she's the great artist of that family. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like grandma's, uh, you know, green jello with the carrots in it. You don't really want it, but it's grandma's green jello, and that's all she makes. And she brings it and just eats some, you spoiled brat. Right. Right? Right. But at some point, somebody always says, like my dad did, you know, when he saw the green jello, would your aquarium freeze up? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. somebody always did what that happened to Christine with the, you know, with the um, sugar pie. Mm -hmm. And so you get, it's a reckoning. It's like, oh, there, you know, this sugar pie thing isn't, this isn't a good, you know, it's no longer in vogue. Right. But it right. was my signature. So now what's my signature? And she became unraveled, if you noticed, in the next few episodes. Well, she I mean, him. she went home and, and had kind of the, the episode. The, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, her sugar pie became, you know, her, her I guess, nemesis. Yeah. My mom made green jello, though, so. Did she? Don't be. With carrots, uh, yeah. walnuts, and pineapple. I didn't say I didn't like it. <laughs> no, it's funny because my kids would look at that and go, what the hell? Did they what try is, it, though? They did. Because they'd put they a little had, bit on the plate, right? Right. And then it would be left there shimmering. Yeah. Well, they took a bite. <laughs> yeah, you take a bite. But they were just like confused, like, how is this a thing ever? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I say. We're, you know, sometimes they're, we're celebrated for things within a family that we would never be celebrated outside of that family. And that's, you know, and I'm not sure that that is a good thing for people. I think people should say, listen, your sugar pie's no good. Yeah. You gotta move on. Yeah. How about some, you know, vegetable pie? Okay. Yeah, because times they are a change. Yeah, right? it's true. Yeah. And that's a lot what this show is about mm. and this family is about, that's for sure.
So the, there will be a second season? There will. Which is great. Yeah, I've, I've, I've met with the writers a few times and got to sit in the writer's room, and it's, it's going to be quite a season. Yeah, got some good ideas. Because the last uh, we saw I mean, Chip, he's on, a, he's on a train leaving town, presumably. Yeah. yeah. But I, I guess he's probably not going to get too far. Well, I'll tell you this. Christine is not... Uh, is not content uh, as she was in the last episode of just, you know, taking it easy. Things are going to happen this next episode for everybody. That's the great thing about the way they're writing the episodes. Everybody is going to get to grow and move and, um, you know, be crazy. Nice. Yeah. So you'll go back and start shooting that in the fall. Yes. Um, in the meantime, you're continuing stand-up, right? I'm doing stand-up. I'm trying to work on a few other creative projects. I'm supposed to finish writing a book, but it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, I wish somebody else would write it for me. Because <laughs> it's hard I, I, to write a book. Yeah, yeah. You know, you say, hey, hey, you ski, you're really good about three pages in. And then you go, wow, ugh. Yeah. But uh, maybe I'll write a book about Christine. It'll be much easier. My I, life as a woman. I heard Jeffrey Tambor was a, an, an influence too, and kind of an inspiration for the way you played this part, his, his work on Transparent. Yeah, I watched some episodes of Transparent, which is brilliant, but very, it was, it was heart, there were a lot of heartbreak, there's a lot of heartbreak right. in that. But I, one thing I watched that he did that was so positive for my character, he didn't try to uh, become a woman, he tried to become himself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Right. You know what I mean? It he wasn't, wasn't, he didn't, he didn't change his voice. He didn't, he just, he, he you know, he, he grew out his hair or however they did the hair and put the clothes on, but he remained himself and maybe his true self. And so I saw by not, uh, you know, that's why I think we didn't try to change the voice of, mm -hmm. of the, of Christine and do an affected, uh, you know, some kind of silly voice. And so I think that was really good for me to see that. And I think that, you know, um, I just embrace the idea that I'm Zach's mom. I mean, I really think, what would a, my mom do? What would a mom do when I play this character? I really think, you know, I'm a maternal person, um, you know, in, in my life. I care about people, I wanna take care of them. So I'm, that's what I'm doing with Chip and Dale and the twins and Martha and anyone else I can get my hands on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's such a great tradition of, of men, you know, dressing up in drag and yeah. the Monty, watching the Monty Python guys do it throughout yeah. the. But this is something I mean, just completely different and completely, I think, unexpected and just so beautiful about your work. Thank um, you. And it just continued to grow and deepen throughout the season. So, you know, I got so much support. In the, in the, in the, you know, Jonathan's a really, I don't mean to just sing his praises, Zach and Louie and everybody, the cast and the crew is really solid and like a family. But what I really f found was uh, Jonathan just hardly saying anything to me, but directing it beautifully. Mm. You know, like when something, when he didn't, he would just have me try it again and he'd let me find myself and you know, I think that, you know, if you believe in divine intervention, I think my mom has her hand in this thing. I think she's dabbling in. Can you feel her a little bit? I can feel, work? you know, that when, when I uh, spew off some line that isn't in me, that yeah. comes out of nowhere, I go, oh, that's, that, I think that was my mom who just took over. <laughs> you know? Nice, nice. Well, I look forward to seeing where she goes next. Me too. And thank you so much for uh, stopping by the Times. Thanks. Appreciate Glenn, I it. appreciate it. Thanks. And for more of these uh, Emmy conversations, please go to latimes.com. Thanks for watching.